What's up YouTube, it's Joel. Big news, we are days away from getting this bill passed on August 5th for the bipartisan infrastructure bill. But I have really good news for what people are more focused on and that is the huge $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. Now this bill with the more stimulus, $1,200 stimulus checks, $200 social security increase, and more money for the kids through the monthly stimulus checks. And right now, Schumer and Biden are pushing to unite the Democrats and bring this bill to pass in the next week, trying to get this done before the August recess for Congress. But we have more progressives in the House of Representatives who are looking to take this $3.5 trillion dollar reconciliation package and make it larger with more stimulus which we'll get to in just a moment but also congress is running out of time to make a decision on the debt ceiling we got all the details on that and what needs to be done so that the u.s can pay its bills and we do have more relief for those that were hit hardest during the pandemic there is a limited targeted extension on the eviction moratorium until early October, so people won't be evicted from their homes in most of the country. Now this is your stimulus and economic news update, and I hope you're having a great day. So we're trying to hit our next goal. Let's get to 55,000 subscribers. And once we do that, I'm gonna give away another $500 on this channel to our subscribers. Now in order to qualify, all you have to do is these three things. Smash the like button for this video, be subscribed or subscribe to the channel, and comment on this video on a topic that we talk about. But I really appreciate everyone's support and them choosing to come and view our channel. Our channel is growing and it's all because of you. And that's why I wanna give back. But please, if anyone asks you for personal info or to contact them on WhatsApp, it is not me, it's fake, so please don't do it. So we are literally days away from getting the bipartisan infrastructure bill passed. Joe Manchin is saying that August 5th is going to be that day. Manchin said they're drafting it, the text will be done, hopefully we'll introduce it today. We'll vote on it tonight, we'll start the amendment process hopefully, but we want it to be done by Thursday. We want to move on. So they are moving fast and together on this $1.2 trillion infrastructure package because it leads them into the next bill, which is the $3.5 trillion reconciliation package. And August recess is coming up really quick for Congress. But Chuck Schumer has said that they're working through this recess till they have the bipartisan bill and the reconciliation package passed, not just uh, built, but actually passed. Chuck Schumer has pledged that both the chambers will pass both the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the larger $3.5 trillion budget resolution, which is the blueprint for a second more sweeping infrastructure measure before senators depart for the August recess. Manchin and Susan Collins said they believe that the massive infrastructure bill has enough support to pass in the Senate, with Manchin saying that the chamber should finish up by August 5th. So we're not really concerned now about the bipartisan infrastructure bill, but now more focus is being put towards the next bill, which is the reconciliation package. This is going to be the package that contains what everyone is looking for, and that's a forced stimulus check. House Democrats already have their bill to tie the reconciliation package that would give out the new $1,200 stimulus checks to Americans, including those on Social Security, SSI, and SSDI. Also, they are pushing for an increase to the monthly checks for all Social Security recipients. This is huge because there's a ton of seniors that really need some help right now. But there is another part to this. We are $28.5 trillion in debt as a nation, and some Democrats are focused on getting this fully paid for and not adding to the national debt. Senator Ron Wyden said, we're going to pay for $3.5 trillion. This is the guy who is tasked with raising revenue in his role as the chair of the Finance Committee. He said, we expect to be working all through the summer. Now also included in the package will be investments like free community college, 
child care assistance, and universal pre-kindergarten, and the extended four years for the monthly checks sent to parents for the increased child tax credits. Now, people are wanting to see the stimulus fast, and so I have really good news for you if you're looking for that. We have Chuck Schumer who said, he understood that completing the writing of such a large bill is a difficult project, but he warned that he was prepared to keep lawmakers in Washington for as long as it took to complete votes on both the bipartisan infrastructure plan and a budget blueprint that would allow for the Senate to begin work later this year on the massive $3.5 trillion social health and environmental bill. He said, the longer it takes to finish, the longer we will be here, but we're going to get the job done. So this is where we can see that Schumer is not playing games in getting these bills passed without taking no breaks in Congress. And a lot of people would be happy about that because bills don't take a recess and rent is due. And so a lot of people are ready to see something sent to them in the form of a direct payment. And that's what they are working on right now. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments section with all this craziness stuff that's happening. So now we move on to the United States hitting the debt ceiling. Congress has missed the key debt ceiling deadline. Now what? So lawmakers missed a deadline this past week to extend former President Trump's two-year suspension on the nation's borrowing limit. The debt ceiling, which hit $22 trillion in August of 2019, is the legal limit on the total amount of debt that the federal government can borrow on behalf of the public, according to the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget. So once the suspension lifted, now the new limit was reinstated around $28.5 trillion, a figure that includes debt held by the public and the government. Now, Janet Yellen implored lawmakers to protect the full faith and credit of the United States by raising or suspending the U.S. debt ceiling. So Congress has to be the one to raise the debt ceiling, but it can't be done like the reconciliation with simple majority. They have to pass a law with, within the Senate with 60 votes at minimum. But in order to do that, they will have to get some of the Republicans on board to vote to raise the debt ceiling. But then Mitch McConnell, who is the leader of the GOP of the Republicans, said, I can't imagine there will be a single Republican voting to raise the debt ceiling after what we've been experiencing. So if the U.S. fails to raise or suspend the debt limit, it would eventually have to temporarily default on some of its obligations, which could have some serious and negative economic implications. Interest rates would likely spike and demand for treasuries would drop. Even the threat of a default can cause borrowing costs to increase. Now, Janet Yellen said failing to increase the debt limit would have an absolutely catastrophic economic consequences. So we are at a critical point with our debt as a nation. But I want to know what you think about this down in the comment section, but they are working to do something about it. So it happened. Biden came through or the CDC came through, which is it's the Center for Disease Control, came through to extend the freeze on evictions for most of the United States, about 90%. Now, I didn't even know they had the power to do that. But the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued a fresh stop on certain evictions, saying that evicting people could be detrimental to public health and would interfere with efforts to slow the pandemic. Now, in a statement they released, they said, in the context of a pandemic eviction moratoria, like quarantine, isolation, and social distancing can be an effective public health measure utilized to prevent the spread of communicable disease. Eviction moratoria facilitates self-isolation and self-quarantine by people who become ill or who are at risk of transmitting COVID-19 by keeping people out of congregate settings and in their own homes. So the new ban applies to areas of the country with high or substantial transmission of COVID-19. Now this will last until October 3rd, so it's not a super long extension, but it is something. Now there's both sides to every story. And the thing is that is getting most people is that there is literally $46.5 billion of rental assistance from one of the last relief packages that was put out for rental assistance to help people pay their rent. 
but that's where it was up to the state and the local governments to send out those funds to help people pay the rent. Now, senior Democrats are trying to push the Treasury Department to figure out how state and local governments can get this, can deliver the $46.5 billion in rental assistance more efficiently. Because since this was authorized in December of 2020, as of end of June, only 6.5% of those funds have been dispersed. Now, what's going on? But now they're trying to work overtime to get their relief out but we haven't given much relief of that $46.5 billion to the American people. So it's not like the money isn't there, but they need to develop some sort of system, whether it's an online system or something that can disperse these funds out to people that need it so that they don't end up on the street and they actually get the money for what it was used for and what it was allocated for to help people with rental relief. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. But I do want to say for all those true life investors out there, if you're planning to start investing, if you want to start growing your wealth and having your money work for you, why don't you use one of the links that I have down in the description that literally gives you free stocks whenever you sign up through my link. There's one called Weeble. They literally give you two free stocks worth up to $1,850. And there's another one called Robinhood. They give you two free stocks as well worth up to $500 but this is literally free money and you can use it. You can start putting money into it each week. That's what I do. And you get your money to start growing and working for you. And I know the stock market is kind of a scary place, but if you're asking me, I say there's a lot of safety when it comes to numbers. So there's one that I invest all my money into and that's the S&P 500. It's one stock essentially that is comprised of 500 different companies. And these are the largest companies in the stock market. So basically in this stock, they buy a small percentage of all those 500 companies and then they put it all into one. So it makes it easier for people to invest and have safety whenever they invest in the stock market. But it's done phenomenal over the past 30 years, as you can see in this chart, and it's making a lot of money for a lot of people. And I'm saying, why not you? I have those links down in the description where you can go learn more about it and those links to actually go to those websites and sign up and start investing. But if you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. But please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all stimulus and economic news that affects you and learn how to build some wealth. This is Joel True Life Investing. Until next time, peace out.